Hey there everybody, welcome back to the Alpha of the Eagle channel. My name is Matt and it's Book Review Monday. This week we have The Gathering Storm by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. Now this review is going to be a little different. I'm going to have, kind of have it in two parts. I want to talk about the main plot and then I want to talk about um, the switch of authors. Mainly uh, the Jordan Sanderson excuse me, uh, writing style and certain other things. So. Here we go, it's my broad plot for The Gathering Storm. Now this was published in 2009. It is the 12th book in Robert Jordan's epic Wheel of Time series, and now it's uh, Jordan and Sanderson here. And the, the plot of this book mainly focuses on two characters, and that's gonna be Rand and Egwene. And we're gonna start with Rand's story. Um, it's not to say that Perrin and Matt aren't in this book, they are, but their roles are very uh, diminished compared to the others and um, they actually kind of tie in more with the Rand and Egwene story not so much Matt but people attached to Matt than, um, than some of the other characters that are mentioned so with Rand the main thing he's trying to do in this book is find uh, Grendel one of the Forsaken as they have uh, Semmer Hage uh, being interrogated at the time Semmer Hage was captured in Knife of Dreams after uh, she blew Rand's hand off, and um, he still has that problem. It's constantly mentioned that he's, you know, uh, he's going to brush his hand through his hair, and it's just the stump. Um, and as Summer Hage is being interrogated, um, she eventually becomes freed and um, attempts to collar Rand with that male collar, the, the Adam. Um, and as you remember, uh, Katsuane, I think, is supposed to be uh, guarding this male collar. And uh, Summer Hage gains it somehow, and she is able to collar Rand. By doing that, she's actually trying to make ma make Rand strangle men. Um, and he almost does it until he taps into something called the true power. It's not even the one power anymore. It's the true power. And this feeling is very overwhelming to him in a good way. Um, he is able to break the collar off and basically destroys uh, Summer Hage and one of the Black Sisters. And I didn't write her name down, I'm sorry. Um, but when Rand does this, he truly becomes different. Now, um, he becomes almost emotionless. Like every decision he makes after this point is very questionable. And so you wonder, you know, what's going on? Um, is this an effect of the true power or is this an effect of the madness that's going to get to him? And what we go on with the story because um, you do kind of learn later on what, what a lot of this is. Um, as Since, since um, Summer Hage gains the, the mail collar, uh, he brings in Katsuin and says, you know, you were spo you're supposed to be the one that was guarding this and instead you allowed it to be taken. And he sends her into exile and basically says, if I ever see your face again, I will destroy you. And so Katsuane, not wanting to be too far away from the Dragon Reborn, finds ways to make sure that, you know, her face is cloaked and that he doesn't really know she's there. Now, Rand knows she's there. It's, it's revealed later that he, he really is aware of her presence. But he's not going to do anything because I think in the back of his mind, he realized that there were uh, problems uh, within his own reaction to that. Um now, Rand has not yet had his meeting with the Daughter of the Nine Moons. Um, that is going to happen here in this book. But um, the meeting that was supposed to happen in Knife of Dreams with the Daughter of the Nine Moons was sidetracked because it was Simmer Hage and he got his hand blown off in that. So Rand meets with Tuan, who's not officially the Empress yet. She's still the Daughter of the Nine Moons. Rand is trying to make peace so he can unite the peoples for the last battle. But the meaning doesn't go too well. Um, like I said, I'm being really broad here. And there is a denial of peace. And Rand leaves angrily. He really leaves angrily. After that point, uh, Tuan eventually declares herself Empress, something that needs to be openly said. And there actually is a chapter in the book that... Um, it's, it's called The Death of Tuan, and I was looking at the chapters, and I'm like, oh my god, does she die in this? Because I didn't think she died. And no, it is that she has um, taken the mantle off herself as Tuan and is becoming the Empress, and that's a sort of uh, ceremony that happens in there. 
Um, they are able to, they, Rand, uh, Nynaeve, they are able to track down where Grendel is. And you actually get a lot of chapters from Nynaeve's point of view in, in this book, and I like that. Because she's getting a chance to see Rand's transformation after he is able to break off the, the collar and use the true power. Um, they are able to track Grendel to um, uh, a barrow. I can't remember the name of it now. I'm sorry, I should have written it down. Um, Rand is able to send one of his soldiers in with uh, corruption in his mind. And he thinks that if... Uh, well, not corruption is money. He sends him in. He expects Grendel to corrupt him. Sends him out. And they're able to tell whether or not he destroys Grendel by if he uh, destroys the place and Grendel is gone. And so, yeah, he uses Balefire to completely destroy this place where she's supposed to be. And there's no more corruption in this guy's mind. So they assume that Grendel is dead. So, the problem with that and it's something both Nynaeve and Min kind of see, is that he completely destroys a structure that's filled with innocent people. And he basically has no feeling towards that. And so they get very worried. Um, Nynaeve works with Katsuane, uh to bring Tam Althor to them, because Tam is working with Perrin at this point, uh, hoping that Rand's father will be able to communicate with him again. And um, that doesn't go so well. Rand and his father have a nice heart-to-heart. -heart, and then Tam Althor kind of lets it fly that, you know, he's here because of Nynaeve and Katsuain. And Rand loses it. He's tired of being controlled and almost kills his father and then storms out. He goes to Dragon Mount, uh, basically where Luce Theron killed himself last time. And he has the code and call. I think, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, it's basically one of those um, angry elves that he can kind of source the one power through. And he realizes that that kind of can be a source of problems for him. He destroys it, and in that act, he actually becomes um, normal again. And what I mean by that is when he became emotionless, he actually became kind of scary, and now he became more of himself. He's not completely there, but he becomes more of himself, the Rand we know way back at Eye of the World. And that's basically Rand's story. Let's head over to Egwene, the other major uh, plot point in the book. Egwene uh, continues her mission, as she did in Knife of Dreams, to undermine Elida. And things are getting worse in the White Tower. No one trusts anyone. Uh, and eventually, even the sitters and the Mistress of Novices are like, I don't trust what Elida is doing anymore. And... Egwene is even able to convince a lot of people that just treat me like the armor and seat and you'll be fine. Um, and Elida basically goes into a string of abuse when um, she's told... Hold on one second. Sorry. When she's told that she has to use... Uh, not has to use. Has to attend to Elida during dinner and things like that. And Elida loses it. And basically they uh, she declares Egwene a dark friend and has her tossed into the prisons Um However, she has no evidence to merit a movement like that, and Egwene is released. When she's released, uh, she goes to her room to find that Varen is there. Now, Varen, I think, was a brown sister. She's kind of popped in and out of the story as things go along. I think she's had contact with each and every one of our main characters, and uh, Varen reveals that she's been a black sister, but she was doing so so she could understand who else within the tower was black? Uh, who else, uh, black Aja? Who else in the towers, uh, sorry, the rebel tower was black Aja? And that she found a loophole in the oaths um, that she could reveal certain things. And one of the oaths is, uh, until the hour of my dying breath. So she's committing suicide. And in that last hour, she's handing over all the information she has to Egwene. Names of sisters who are black Aja and all that. And so after that, we have the Shanshin attack on the tower. This is something Tuan decides to do after the meeting with Rand goes poorly. Um, Egwene fights them off. She has a Terangriel, I believe, and is using it quite effectively. Uh, she is pretty much the leader the tower needs. Elida is nowhere to be seen, uh, and when she is, she's finally captured and collared by the Shanshin. But eventually the Shanshin have to leave. Um, Egwene is pretty much exhausted. She's rescued by 
Swan, Sanche, uh, Gawain, and, and uh, Gareth Bryn, who should not have come in, but because they knew the attack was happening, they had to make that movement. They had to get her out. Um, when uh, Egwene uh, wakes up, she exposes members of the Black Tower within the rebel group that she has. Um, there's about 50 sisters she completely exposes. And at the end of the book, what we have is Egwene uh, hopes to kind of go in back into Tarvalon and speak some terms with this and finds out that the sitters of the hall have decided that she is the Armorland Seat. Uh, and the tower is united once again with her as the head. And there's a few little bits of exposition and things that happen here, but for the most part, that is the broad outline of the plot. Now, what did I think of The Gathering Storm, the 12th book in The Wheel of Time? Well, the problem is I've had a, a rocky relationship with The Wheel of Time ever since uh, book seven, I wanna say. Uh, mainly that some of these books took me way too long to read. Um, and they shouldn't take too long to read. I am a fast reader. I look at the other fantasy series that I've read, and I've read them quickly, or at least fairly quickly. And with the Wheel of Time, to see in Book 11, Knife of Dreams, that there was a turnaround, that there were storylines that were being uh, finished for now, showed me, and I mentioned this last week in the review too, that I could feel that Jordan was winding down. And I could feel that things were finally starting to resolve. And I liked that. That's why Knife of Dreams got three and a half out of, not three and a half, three stars out of five for me. The Gathering Storm uh, took me by surprise. I read The Gathering Storm in a week and a half, uh, which is very fast for a Wheel of Time book for me. But that's mainly because the writing styles uh, have changed a little bit and the pacing changed a little bit which led me to give The Gathering Storm four stars out of five. I loved the storylines in this one. And even though the book mainly projected itself on two characters, and like I said, there was other stuff with Matt and things, um, and I'll go over one thing with Matt that really kind of irked me a little bit. Uh, this book kind of brought me back to what I loved about Wheel of Time to begin with. The pacing was amazing. Hands down, um, that's one of the big improvements I saw in this book. And that has a lot to do with the um, influence, I think, of Brandon Sanderson. And it was one of the things that, when I was doing my research, I found that at first it was criticized, but then realized that, yes, it was a good change uh, with that. I do like Sanderson's, so Sanderson's style. I know a lot of people are asking me to review um, Stormlight Archive next. And I, I've said this last week, I'll say it again, I cannot, in good conscience, review a book uh, and part of a series without that series being done. Or at least by the time I get to the end, that uh, the book will be done. Um, because then I can't do this weekly series for you guys. I'll be jumping back and forth between series, and I don't want to do that. I'm sorry about the shaky table, everybody. I'm trying to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, so the pacing was better. I liked the storylines that happened. Uh, I was very happy to see a conclusion to Egwene's storyline and the division in the White Tower. Um, happy to see that complete. I'm happy to see Rand kind of be Rand again at the very end. He got a little scary there. Now, um, he, the things will change as we go farther into the last two books, but it was I was glad to see that once again. Um, and overall, like I said, this, this was just, for me, I, I loved the stories that were in this one. Uh, it was missing just that little something, though, and one of the things that I didn't care for was one of Matt's storylines. Now, I'm a big fan of Matt. I really like um, a lot of stuff that's happened with him, but there is one instance in this book that really bothered me, and I'm not sure why, and I think it's because it felt episodic. We're in this point of the Wheel of Time series where things should be wrapping up, where things shouldn't feel like the kind of uh, adventure of the week feeling and in Matt's story we have this town that is normal by day evil by night um, and I just felt like yes it was an explanation to show that the dark one is spreading throughout the lands but it just felt like a bit of an adventure like something that could have benefited in a short story or in a bit of recap um, it was interesting and I had fun with it but at the same time, I felt like it was sidetracking us from the main story. Like, I look back on it now and I say, well, what did that give to the main storyline with the exception of showing that, that the Dark One is spreading? 
it, it's kind of going to show us that we have a problem with supply in the army and they're just trying to resupply the group here and I think that's really what the point was but I don't think it was um, stretched to the point where it needed its own like 40 50 pages worth of story uh, this is just me I'm not saying that uh, it was bad uh, for the sake of the story it was uh, like I said I enjoyed it but when I look back on it I don't know what kind of effect it was going to have on the story completely so that's my only major complaint with the gathering storm I did miss a few characters uh, I one of the few things that kind of bothered me too was you know Lan has, has been sent off to go help his people and Rand is kind of treating him as though a means to an end Land is gonna start Lan is gonna start the battle and he's going to sacrifice himself, but it'll be a warranted sacrifice because that's going to be needed to kind of take care of that end while Rand takes care of the other end. And that kind of callous attitude, I mean, I didn't like it. I got it as far as the story goes, but I personally did not like it. I understand why it happened in the story. And that's a big change that's going to happen at the end here where Rand begins to learn more about himself, be himself, uh, back the way he was uh, during the Eye of the World. Now... A lot of you are going to ask me, what did I think about the the addition of Sanderson? I really liked it. I can't wait to read more of his work. I think it's um, he has a fantastic writing style that I can really get into. It's engaging. And I really do like his pacing. I think it's fantastic. Sorry, I had a niche here. Uh, I think it's one of the better paced stories I've read in a long time. I think that his addition here, and I'm, I'm still reading... Wheel of Time stuff here, and his addition really helps move the story along. And I gotta credit both authors on that one, first and foremost, because we are finishing the story up. Now, I've got a chance to research that I think Jordan said that the last book would probably have been 2,000 pages long. Well, I'm glad that they split it up into three more because I don't know if I if even a book would have been publishable at 2,000 pages. I mean, it could, but how heavy would that book have been? How much would it have cost? To the um, to the to the buyer, it's it's good that they split it up into three. I think, uh, and this granted, this is from the perspective of someone who's tackling this series after the whole thing has been out. I have no idea what it must have felt like to wait years and years for these books to be coming out in in this succession. So, The Gathering Storm gets four stars from me. I thought it was excellent, and. Um, one of my favorites in the series. It's right up there with Great Hunt, Dragon Reborn, Eye of the World, Lord of Chaos. It's up there with those. Um, I'm happy to see the turnaround here that the, the storylines are, are concluding. That's, that's what I try to mean by that. And we see more of this as the series goes on. Going forward, uh, I think I need to take a few weeks off. Mainly because uh, we are heading away on vacation soon. And I don't have enough content that I'll be able to upload it while I'm away. And I also won't have the ability to upload it while I'm away. So uh, if I am able to, I will try to make sure that a book review is uploaded for Towers of Midnight next week. Uh, if not, it will probably come on the week following. Not the week following. Sorry, let me get the date up. Uh, August 6th will be when I'm officially back from vacation. Um, and at that point, I will probably be getting back late. So I'm going to say our next book review will be Towers of Midnight, August 7th at, uh, that's Tuesday, August 7th, so it won't be Book Review Monday, it'll be Book Review Tuesday. But this is just so, you know, uh, I can get away for a few weeks, and um, if I can get Towers of Midnight up next week, I will try really hard to make sure I can do that, otherwise we're looking at August 7th, everybody. Well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you didn't like the video, uh, tell me what you thought I could improve on as we're moving forward. Uh, and always consider subscribing. Hit that bell icon to stay notified with all the stuff we're coming out uh, with these book reviews. And if you would like to recommend a book series uh, that I should tackle next, please let me know in the comments below because we're getting to that point where I'm going to have to start looking at new things here. Keep in mind the rule that I said that I want to make sure that the series is done or that the series will be done by the time I get to it. What I mean by that is when I reviewed The Sword of Truth, I hadn't yet finished Warheart. Um, no, sorry, when I was started reading The Sword of Truth, I hadn't finished Warheart. But I started reading The Sword of Truth in June or July of 2015, and Warheart was coming out in November of 2015. And I had a handful of months to read 17 books, sorry, 16 books to get to the 17th book. 
So that's what I mean by that. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, as always, we'll see you next time, everyone, for our next book review, Towers of Midnight. Thanks for watching.